Hi, family. Um, today, I, I want to read John, the first epistle of John. And this book has a total of five chapters. So I'll probably read one and two. And then the next time, three, four, and five. Unless I just get through it. Because it's a really small book. Um, but first, uh, let me pray. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heavenly Father, I just lift your name on high. Thank you so much, God, for being a healer and deliverer, a chain breaker, a way maker, Lord. You are so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for saving the lost, Lord, and healing people that have been afflicted of diseases in this world and of addictions, Lord. I just thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. May your light be a path to our feet. May you shine your light in the darkness, Father. Holy Spirit, I just ask you to um, give me a word of wisdom today as I read your word. May I retain it. May it stay in my mind and my heart and minister to my soul the word of truth. And I lift up every person that's listening to this and just ask you to bless their life abundantly, Lord, and may you do a good work in them and um, help them to fight the good fight of faith. And I pray this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> okay. So this is the first epistle of John. I'll read the preface of the book. Now, probably an aged man, the Apostle John, wrote a letter to the Christians in general. Judging by the points he emphasized, it seems that John, too, was concerned with the encroachments of Gnostic philosophy into Christian faith. Um, the opinion that Christ only appeared to have a body, but did not really have one, and the opinion that the deeds we do with our bodies, which are inherently evil, cannot contaminate our souls, which are inherently good. In the very first verse, John insisted that the gospel was based on the evidence of his physical senses. He had heard, seen, touched Jesus. And by the end of this chapter, he was warning Christians not to think they have no sin, as if uh, physical deeds do not count. In chapter 2, he insisted that one cannot be a Christian unless his physical life corresponds to that of Jesus. No one who is a true Christian can go on living a sinful, physical life. Every Christian must acknowledge that Christ has come in the flesh. <coughs> Excuse me. In this way, John builds his whole letter around the things of wisdom and life, which we have only in Christ. That's pretty good, huh? Alrighty, so chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show it unto you, that eternal life which was the Father, and was manifested unto us. That was which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things which we write unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not, and do not the truth. So we don't have truth in us. <clears throat> but, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. <clears throat> My little children, these things I write unto you that you may not sin. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation, propitiation, sorry, for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keep his word, in him verily is love of God perfected. Hereby now know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith, he is the light, and had hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. You know, if you ever feel like you're, you hate your brother, you know, pray that God gives you love for your brother and of course always repent and ask forgiveness help them ask Jesus to help love your brother and not to blind your eyes because it's a very terrifying thing to be blinded um there's many layers of sin and it's like these little veils come off our eyes you know when we're when we're with Jesus but if we're not, those blinders stay on and we can't see. So, um, anyways, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the father. I have written unto you fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world. And I'm going to repeat that again. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the, the love of the Father is not in him. And I'm going to repeat that. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the big reason because of that is because this is Satan's world. He is the God of this world. He gives the, the lust to the eyes, to the flesh. And if we seek things that are of earthly kingdom, we're not of God. We're not. And so that's a really uh, important verse there. So um, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is 
the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. And we are in those days now. There's so much deception out there, false, false gospels, it's not even funny. And if we don't know the word, we will get lost. And we make up our own Jesus in our head. And to know Jesus is to know the word. So it's really important. I mean, there's so much to learn in the Bible. It, it, it's our life manual. So I encourage everybody to um, read the word. Uh, they that went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they are not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy, the Holy One, and ye know all things. Oh. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And, and personally, God has shown me that with people that I have tried to evangelize to or minister to. They cannot admit that Jesus is Christ, that he is God. They can't. And it's like, you see the person in front of you and you see their flesh and their face, but you're not seeing in the spirit. You're not seeing what's actually going on. And it's Antichrist spirit that's involved here. So what we do then is we pray for that person to receive the truth and that, that God have mercy on them and open a door for them to receive uh Jesus as their Savior, and to take those blinders off, and you bind and break that Antichrist spirit in the name of Jesus. Um, it's pretty scary, though. This Everything I read in the Word is, is for today. It really is. It is for today. Anyways, sorry I get on these little tangents. Um, so I'm going to read that again. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Christ, Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledge the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things which I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. Let's read that again. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Wow. If ye knew that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. You know, we get so wrapped up in our flesh and into this life and all the distractions that we're not noticing what time it is. Um, we're in the days of Noah. And Jesus says to have your lamp filled, your oil, because he will come and he's going to rapture his church. And if we're not ready, we won't go. 
So it's really important every day that we die to self, that we pick up our cross, and we fight the good fight of faith. And I wanted to share a little testimony um, God just brought to my heart. <clears throat> when I first really started reading the Bible, it was like an obsession at first. I For three months, I would read it like really fast, and I would speak it. Like, I don't read that fast. And I was reading it like really fast out loud. And one time I was reading the word. Oh, this is crazy. I mean, this Bible has life and it, it, it breathes life. And the words like were highlighted. The like the written part was darker and black and there was light underneath each word I read. That is the truth. I've seen that with my own eyes. Um this Bible comes to life. And if you don't open it, you do not know what God has in store for you. And see, it's the enemy. The enemy knows the power of the word. Okay? He does not want you to read the word. So he's going to put all kinds of distractions in your mind, in your head, why you shouldn't read it. I'll get to it later. Well, you know what? One day later might not come for us. And I have to say that to myself, too, because I get I get lazy. I mean, every day I open the Word, and I'll read a passage, but some days I don't read a whole scripture, like a, a book of it. And, you know, I'm just my own, I have to tell my own self that I need to be in this Word. Because for me, I do not want to be deceived. Really, that's one of my biggest fears, is to be deceived. I don't want to be deceived. So I want to know the truth. Um, God put that in me. Like, I've always wanted to know the truth in things. And so the best truth to know is God's truth, God's word. So I pray that you're all blessed and that you have a fabulous week. And I encourage you to pick up the Bible, dust it off, open it, and let God minister to you. God bless you. Bye-bye.